some people are so agitated, the monkey mind, they got too many things going on and they're thinking, okay, they're trying to sit down and write, I suffer from this and I'm feeling like, wait, I've also got this person I need to connect with and I'm kind of dr being drawn off course by not being able to put the blinders on. For people that have that issue, I think learning how to calm the nervous system is very powerful. And the best way that I know how to do that are one of the fastest ways to bring our overall level of autonomic arousal down. And a physiological sigh is a two inhales followed by an extended exhale. It's not just a deep breath, it's two inhales followed by an exhale, mm -hmm. okay? And then what, that, what that does, and this has been shown several times now in humans and other species as well, is it dilates the, the little sacs of the lungs and that second inhale dilates them a little bit more and it pulls a little bit of carbon dioxide out of the bloodstream so that when we exhale, we offload the maximum amount of carbon dioxide and it perfectly adjusts the ratio of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the bloodstream and lungs. And sometimes it only takes one of these double inhale exhales. Sometimes somebody needs to do two or three, but that's the fastest way to bring the autonomic nervous system down. The other thing is we talk a lot about sleep and sleep is extremely important but there are other modes of and brain states that can allow you to recover. One of the ones that I'm a huge proponent of and that my lab has been studying and other labs are studying is what many people call yoga nidra. It's a wonderful practice, yeah, yeah. you know, just lying down and focusing enough of your attention so that you don't fall asleep and enough of your attention on and moving it around so that you're not really concentrating on any one thing. Hypnosis is very similar. Deep relaxation, wandering sort of attention, fairly narrow context, but it brings the brain into these unique states where you're neither asleep nor awake. And for people that have trouble falling asleep or trouble relaxing themselves, these kinds of practices are extremely useful because they're really teaching you how to turn off those modes of focus. So, you know, we, we live in a stressed society. Some people are stressed because they're overwhelmed, but other people are stressed because they just don't know how to turn off their brain and fall asleep. And so if you want to learn how to turn off your brain and fall asleep, these practices are immensely useful. We're now looking at how daily breathing um, exercises can impact people's sleep and levels of stress. And most all of hypnosis that's clinical involves bringing one's state into one of deeper relaxation, not full sleep, and then thinking about some behavioral change that one wants to make. These are ancient practices really. And I think that they were developed by people that understood that rewiring of the brain requires focus and deep rest. What's interesting about hypnosis is it brings those two things together at the same moment. So normally you'll work really hard on something, work really hard, then you'll sleep and that's when the plasticity occurs. But hypnosis likely accelerates that whole process by having people enter a state of deep relaxation and focus at the same time mm. and allows those circuits to reshape themselves. So I think these practices are really useful and I think that sleep more, sleep better, but what if you have trouble sleeping? Well, or falling asleep? Well. We want to define what that is. Some people have a hard time turning off their thoughts. It's really hard. Remember, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. What you can do is to learn to control that perceptual window and distribute it so that your sense of time starts to kind of drift off and you end up in sleep more easily. And it's a practice that most people find if they do it for 10 minutes a day or so, they start sleeping much better within within a week or, or more, you know, and sometimes more, They sometimes people need some other help, like not drinking caffeine yeah. late in the day, et cetera. But, that brain state of no duration path and outcome analysis is going to be the most restorative and you can get it in wakefulness too. So taking a walk where you're just letting your mind go is very powerful. And the other thing that's powerful is optic flow. So self-generated optic flow by walking, running, or cycling shifts the brain into a state of relaxation that's not seen when you're stationary. This is well, des well described in the neuroscience literature. For some reason, it's not well described in the wellness literature, um, but it's a real thing. When you move through space, you're active, you're, there's a natural calming of the brain circuits mm. involved in threat and threat detection. This is the basis for EMDR, eye movement desensitization reprocessing. The lateralized eye movements they have people do in the clinic, that kind of goofy looking thing, that right. lowers stress. And the, the, the rationale is that by coupling a low stress state to the recall of the trauma, it's gonna allow people to reshape their relationship to the trauma, to tolerate the, the discomfort.